<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Regular board meeting for the Lambertsville Unified School District Board of Education, Wednesday, September 4th, 2019. I call this meeting to order at seven o'clock. <clears throat> uh, at this time, if members of the audience, please silence your cell phones and know that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. There are speaker cards in the back. If anyone would like to speak during public comment, we ask that you complete a card and bring it up to the front. This time I'd like to introduce Cuesta Elementary School who has uh, gonna lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and then provide us with a quick presentation. Good evening, President Balzarini, trustees, Dr. Nicholas. I'm Heather Sharp and our students are gonna go ahead and turn it over to them for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Good evening. I'm Christian Doe, and I'm the president. Hi, my name is Anargia, and I'm vice president. Good evening. I'm Leah Lynch, and I'm secretary. Hello everyone, my name is Anika Tube and I am the treasurer. So this is our ASB class of 2019 to 2020. These were the ASB elections that were held on August 23rd. And at Cuesta we do student of the month assemblies as well as most improved. These student of the month assemblies are organized by ASB and we have a monthly character trait and most improved student and are recognized. Awards are given, skits are performed for next month's trait, games are played with student of the month winners and monthly spirit wear contest. This is our CJSF team. We work hand in hand with ASB. CJSF and ASB will be working together th this year with Ms. Lamb, the Recreation and Communication Coordinator here in Mountain House on community service. We have discussed canned food drives, park cleanups, toy drives, tu tutoring at the library, and cloth donations. Fundraisers ASB and CJSF have planned our Scaredy Cat Scatter where students can earn money for their classrooms. Fall Festival, um, the Boots raise money for various grade levels, and the Penguin Patch that the students put together for, for shopping for supplies and younger. <coughs> so obviously there are some other things that we do as leadership group of Cuesta. We do spirit rallies that are organized by the cheer club. We have music and all the grade levels have their chant to show their spirit. Um, we have games and the cougar. We also have movie nights that are hosted by different clubs and grade levels. And we have the daddy daughter dances towards the end of the year. And that's the end, have fun, we have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions from the board? I like your t-shirt. Pink Floyd, very nice. <laughs> uh, on behalf of the board, we just wanna say thank you very much. We appreciate your service at the site and we appreciate you being here tonight. Excellent presentation, thank you. Thank you very much, great job. <laughs> and uh, for the board, don't forget to click on follow the leader. Oh, sorry, oh. forgot, new system. <laughs> don't have that. Uh, roll call. Matthew Balzarini. Here. Colin Clements. Here. Ann Goodrich. Here. Karen Lampell. Absent. David Pombo. Here. Ruxar Mohammed. Here. And uh, Trustee Lampell will be here. She just ran late. Correct. Uh, approval under corrections, the agenda? There are none. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Student preferential vote? Aye. Very good. Uh, moving on to committee reports, item A, district advisory committee. Trustee Lampel is not here, so uh, I will say nothing to report. Item B, District English Language Advisory Committee. Trustee Goodrich. Our next meeting is going to be on September 19th at 6.30 p.m. 
Thank you. Item C, Education Committee, Trustee Pombo. Uh, our next meeting will be September 24th at 6.30. Item D, Facilities, Trustee Clements. Uh, the first and next, the first meeting and the next meeting is not, uh, September 26th at 6.30 here in the boardroom. Thank you. Item E, Policy Committee, Trustee Goodrich. Uh, we have uh, just finished reviewing our policies and sent another batch up, and uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Uh, item F, safety. Our next meeting is on the 18th at 3.30 here in the boardroom. Item G, wellness. Trustee Pombo. Uh, our next meeting is October 9th at 3.30 here in the boardroom. Thank you. Uh, governing board reports. Student board member Mohammed. Um, so we've had a quite a few events in the first month of school. So to start off, we've had um, many of our sports seasons um, start off. And we've had two home football games with a new student spirit section. So that has been going pretty well. And we've also had the freshman rally and tailgate to welcome the new freshmen in. Um, last week was also club fair where all the students were able to see um, all the different clubs offered at our school. And this year we've had the most clubs that we've ever had before. I I think it's above 60. And currently, seniors and juniors are preparing for the Powder Puff football game, which is this Friday at 7. Hopefully, seniors win. Um, and leadership is also currently planning homecoming, which will be the week of September 23rd through the 27th. That's all. Thank you very much. Um, West of students, you can stay if you want, but if you have homework or would like to go home, feel free. <coughs> Sorry about that. Trustee Goodrich? Uh, yes, so on, on, page back. on uh, um, August 29th, I attended the Association of California School Administrators kickoff with Heather Sherburn, uh, Radhika Dinesh, and Amelda Kareem, and Dr. Gonzalez from Wicklin. So that was pretty exciting and uh, a good, good time. And uh, I also spent a lot of time reviewing policies. And that was it. Uh, Trustee Clements? Um, since the last board meeting, um, I managed to attend the football games. I didn't get to stay for the whole uh, games, but it was great to kick off yet another season of athletics for Mountain House High School and the district. And I'm looking forward to a great season for all the sports. Um, I also wanted to recognize one of our students at Mountain House High School for what I think is an incredible accomplishment. Um, <clears throat> uh, I am currently reading a book called Dominus Locked Away, which is book one of the Dominus series. And it was written by Palawasha Khan, who is a senior at Mountain House High School. Um, I'm on chapter three, and so far it's a really, it, it really is a good read. I, I actually had to put it down at the end of my lunch hour today at work. <clears throat> and I think it's doubly incredible that Palawasha Khan started out as an English learner in our district and went on to publish a book. Um, I would love to be published, but <laughs> I can't write worth a darn. So anyway, I wanted to say congratulations to Paul Washa Khan on the manuscript. Trustee Pombo. <clears throat> I attended the uh, Mountain House High School football game against East Union last Friday. Unfortunately, the Mustangs lost, but it was really good to see a nice big crowd out there cheering on our Mustangs, and it's good to be back in the swing of high school sports. Earlier today, I attended the boys' water polo match. I wanted to attend the girls' water po polo match as well, but I was stuck in a meeting. And um, unfortunately, the Mustangs did not prevail, but once again, it was very enjoyable to watch our Mustangs compete. And that concludes my report. Uh, for my report, uh, a lot more CSBA stuff. Uh, I've been working with our new PACER. We've been getting out to meet all of our legislators. And um, just a little bit of information for the board. CSBA has been sending a lot of emails regarding uh, Senate Bill 328, the late start bill. We really need you to try and call legislators if you haven't done so already. They have a real easy process where you can send email. Um, we need our voice to be heard. It's the way it's looking right now. It's looking like it may pass. So we really need to try and reach out to our legislators and let them know that it would directly affect our district uh, in a negative way. So if you could do that, that would be great. And I know you're just getting here. Hi. Would you, <laughs> do you have a report? 
I have a very brief report. Um, I attended the back to school night at Mountain House High School. And after 40 years in education, it was refreshing to hear a unified voice from all of the teachers giving the same message about how grading was going to be done. It was a very professional evening, very well organized. That's good to hear. That's been a long, long journey in this district. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Um, and I had a wonderful, wonderful um, escort. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> How about we take a quick, quick recess so we can get Sharon logged on to this new system? Uh. <laughs> That's techno's term for I've got it. We call the meeting back to order at 7.14. Uh, one thing I failed to mention in my report sitting right here in front of me, I still forgot. Uh, CSBA put out a uh, call for nominations for CSBA directors at large, African American, American Indian, and county, if anyone's interested in applying. Put that information out there. Uh, da, 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 da. Receiving a public comment. Hearing none. Consent items for consideration. Uh, item A, governing board meeting minutes for the regular meeting on August 21st. Item B, ratification of contracts under 50,000. Item C, ratification of 2019-2020 new hires. Item D, ratification of resignations. Item E, ratification of school-sponsored overnight trips. Item F, updated 2019-2020 fundraisers. We can move any for discussion or vote as a whole. Move to approve consent items for consideration. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Student preferential vote? Uh, district admit in this. Wait, wait, oh, wait. I, I, I'm sorry. Before, <laughs> before I move on, Trustee Lampel will read our new hires for us. So we would like to welcome the following new employees to our uh, our wonderful La uh, Lammersville family here: uh, Padmasini Valmagorian, uh, cafeteria computer technician; Orea Cano, supervisor of operations; Ashley Daniker, food service worker; VJ, special ed. Uh, I'm sorry, VJ Go Gopa Kumar, special education age, Aid uh, Zella Alvera, self-contained classroom teacher, Misty Orman, food service worker, Susanna Robles, K-8 custodian one, Diane Salda, learning commons technician, Alfredo Saldivar, custodian security three, Jason Thibodeau, special education aid, and Randall Thomas, physical education teacher. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, District Administrator reports item A, superintendent's report. Uh, yeah, just two, two brief items. Um, I, I've had a number of interactions with the San Joaquin County Office of Education, um, uh, and they have provided us with really a sagely advice. Um, it was an interesting way to get to the advice, but I did want to uh, share with you a couple of things. Um, uh, as we move through the budgeting process, we have our MYP, we bring that forward. We have first and second interim, the whole process. But ultimately, the, uh, after you approve the budget, it goes to the county for approval and then on to the state. So um, they've expressed some concerns about um, the, the rapid growth in our district in that uh, rapid growth comes uh, with expenses. And, um, and recently, because of... Uh, national and um, international economic conversations on the news about a fear of a recession, um, they have asked us to uh, look into a, 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 a developing what is called an economic uncertainty fund. Um, and, and that is, uh, as everyone knows, uh, back in the 08-012 era, um, Mountain House and this region in, in California were hit particularly hard um, w in the Great Recession. So uh, we met and we discussed that, and uh, they gave some ideas. But um, I, what I wanted to let the board know is, is I would like to, uh, to bring forward for an info discussion item a potential policy about an economic uncertainty fund um, and also um, uh, some ideas on how to build that um, prudently um, so you don't want to be too cautious or, or not cautious enough um, in the unlikely case there's a second Great Recession in 10 years. Um, at the same time, uh, we're seeing unprecedented growth in the district, and we have to prepare for that. So I said, so you guys are asking me to look into this as almost like an oxymoron, prepare for great growth 
and no growth simultaneously. <laughs> um, but their advice um, is 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 warranted because um, anyone who's lived in worked in a district uh, when the recession hit, I mean, the state of California has education, the education system and social services to pay for a significant portion of the last recession. So I just wanted to let the board know that I, I uh, multiple meetings with the county. Um, I would be, I would be bringing forward probably in the next board meeting a recommended language for a policy so that we have a common practice so that in good times you put a little money aside for bad times um, is not a bad idea. Uh, the second thing is as I traveled last week to uh, Sacramento to uh, meet with our bond council, our um, our contract council, uh, the consultant that does the math that generates the Melarus tax rates. Uh, a developer, the lead developer in the AB neighborhoods, um, and a couple of other folks uh, to fine tune the information that has to be shared amongst that group to uh, form a CFD. And I brought it up a couple of board meetings ago, but uh, that be the results of that board meeting is significant progress. So I want to say that a, a community f financing district is uh, on its way. Um, we may have to do a special board meeting. I have no idea when we might ask for that. But the way it would work is um, they have to get all their information shared and agreed upon. Then it would come, there would be some uh, votes by the board at uh, possibly the September 18th meeting, then a 30 day window, um, and then a second approval. Uh, it takes, that's the fastest you can get a CFD formed. Um, but uh, there were some delays uh, caused in by, the, by the developer that we have uh, addressed. And, um, and it's now moving more rapidly. So uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up that those two things are coming forward. Um, I don't have a ton of control over some of them because other people have to do things, but um, those are very important for the ultimate um, ability in the CFD to raise the Melarus taxes, fees, sell the bonds, and have money to pay for the building of a school, which will be Evelyn Costa. And that's my report. Any comments from the board? Um, the first item, the... Yes. Uncertainty fund. Uh, we were here in 08, so we know, you know, what transpired, we know how as quickly as they're building, how quick it stopped. Uh, that being said, the money's got to come from somewhere, and I'm really interested how we're going to pull this off, uh, especially with current negotiations going on. So uh, is it possible to have this individual from the county make a presentation for us on recommended ideas on how we can accomplish this? Um, I, I can look into that. That's a possibility. Uh, one of the key points they made was uh, we have fluctuations in our reserve. And uh, I pointed out that we uh, just completed $85 million in capital facilities projects. We finished the high school and opened a school within an 18-month window. The money got saved so it could be spent to open the school and the CTE wing and, and all the great stuff at the high school. So... Um, let me look into that. I, 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 I'm not sure they can deliver somebody who would speak to this because I think they're expecting me to speak to this. Maybe we can brainstorm on this and see if we can come up with, with some assistance from the county. Uh, if they're going to thrust this upon us, it would be nice to get some input from them. Excellent. I, I will be happy to do the research on that. So point of clarification. Um, so the recommendation was from the county level. Um, I somehow I understood that it went through the county and went up to the state and it was the state saying that, but it was the county level. Correct. So the county uh, will be a formally approving our budget this month. And the, the, they write, uh, they well, we always write these little letters, you know, I kind of bring them out and I say congratulations to Alvina and her team and saying that same process is going to happen. The, 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 the budget's being approved, but um, they made extra note about this particular issue because of the rapid growth, the expensive nature of opening schools, multiple schools being open in a short period of time, a potential recession, um, and having to prepare for all of it. So that's where that conversation came. And then, um, but the, the good advice, and I agree with their advice, is uh, to have a policy is the best course of action, then everybody's clear on what we're trying to do. Um, this would be separate and apart from the reserves, correct? Would it correct? Would it fall under the same restrictions as far as how much we can have in that fund or those sorts of things, or is it? Uh, it's an excellent question. So um, we have a mandated reserve of three percent, and that's a half to, and we have that, and that's separate. But um, uh, 
I've been looking at uh, other districts who have a policy. They typically say, you know, economic uncertainty fund is the fanciest version of that term. A rainy day fund is another way to say it. Um, but it kind of fluctuates on how people have done it. So I've looked at a number of districts. I kind of liked uh, how San Mateo did it and a couple of ideas from Manteca. Um, but the idea is uh, when you're in a unique micro economy such as, as the one here, that you do have to take a look at what happened in, in the 08 period. Um, so it would be, back to your question, it would be a choice on our part to put money away for when something bad happens so that let's say, uh, like when, when I was in Stockton when all this went down, we were laying off 200 teachers a year. And um, we were having very difficult negotiations and there were no agreements. So the only thing you could do is take the youngest teachers or the earliest in their tenure and they went out the door. So let's say there was a, a fund such as this in a district and there was a terrible economic time, that money could cir circumvent a, a layoff or help make it less bad. Um, so those are the kind of ideas that um, districts are struggle with in terms of how much, how, how do you do it and why would you do it? And that would be one of the reasons is, is to mitigate a tough time uh, with some money you put aside away from the reserve. Uh, item B, District Maintenance and Operations Report. Mr. Legrand. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Uh, today I met with Spur this afternoon to talk about some energy potential en energy potential savings programs for the district. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Spur is a conglomerate. That's a JPA of 250, roughly 250 school districts. They uh, you leverage their buying power as one unit. Uh, they have a lot of good programs. Some of them may be useful for our district, so this is the first meeting I have with them. I've used some of their districts. Uh, I'll be reviewing the info with Thor that I got today and maybe moving forward on a few things. Um, I attended the construction meetings this morning. Uh, Cordis is moving along very well. Um, district office, we started moving in. If you haven't noticed, uh, I think everyone's pretty much moved upstairs. I think Special is moving it downstairs tomorrow. Uh, the warehouse is coming along well. The rough plumbing's in. They're putting the forms uh, on the ground now for the slab. They're supposed to pour concrete next week, and the building itself is arriving next week as well. Um, I met with two user groups last week. Both of them wanted to use the high school. Um, one was a badminton club. One was a, some sort of a festival. I can't remember the name. Um, I did my best. I told them good luck. High school is very full, but we will try and work with them and get their events in there. Um, we've been able to fill most of our openings. We're down from seven to two opens, openings, so that's good. Making good progress there, so thanks to HR, Social Arena, Rain's a big helper for me uh, getting that done. Next Monday, I meet with a new uh, pest control company. Um, I work with them in the past. They have a very good integrated pest management program. Um, they, they used to, at least. I haven't worked with them in a couple years. Um, we have a company now we use. Uh, we have a couple issues with them. They're pretty um, reactive instead of proactive, and they don't always check in with the leads like we asked them to when they're on site. So maybe make a switch in the future on that um been working with turner uh, they have a 20 plus item warranty list for the high school that they've been working on the last couple weeks um trying to get those things knocked out um next week we have a company come in and repair the doors at the high school and the gym that you, the board approved that work in july i believe um 12 of the 16 gym doors don't line up correctly and then a couple of the extra doors are messed up as well so that's finally getting fixed this week that order parts the parts are in there coming next week to do those repairs so that's a good thing and then the following week the week of the 16th the company's coming out to do final measurements for the stage side curtains at the board I think that project got approved uh, they're doing the final measurements before they do fabrication and those will um, plan to be installed in October and I think that's all I have Happy to answer any questions. Glad to hear about the pest company. What's that? Glad to hear about the pest company. That's yeah. good news for. Well, we have one now, and we have monthly service at all the sites, and we have twice service at the high school, and we also have a company that comes in and does uh, gophers and moles. That's two times a month as well. So we, we have coverage, but I don't. I think I don't think we're doing everything we need to be doing. So it, that's where we're at. It doesn't hurt to light a little fire under them once in a while to. What was that? I said it doesn't hurt to light a little fire under them once in a while to. Uh, it's nice that they know that we have options. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks. All right. Thank you.
Action item, uh, item A, consider approval of 2019-2020 inter and intra district transfer request. There's no staff report, so can I get a motion? Move to approve the 2019-2020 inter and intra district transfer requests. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Student preferential vote? Decline to vote. Decline to vote. And motion carries. Item B, consider approval of adjourning the regular meeting to open public hearing instructional materials. And this item, uh, Education Code Section 60119 requires that the governing board of a school district hold an annual instructional materials public hearing to determine whether the district has sufficient standard aligned uh, standards aligned textbooks and instructional material. The public hearing notice was posted at least 10 days in advance in at least three public places within the district. After the public hearing, the adoption of a resolution states whether textbooks and instructional material are sufficient. Uh, this is that process. So if there's a motion. Move to adjourn the regular meeting to an open public hearing instructional material. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Student preferential vote? Aye, very good. We are now in open hearing. Item C, consider approval of closing the public hearing and resuming regular session. Move to approve closing public hearing and resume regular session. Second. First and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Student provincial vote? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Item D, consider approval of instructional materials governing board resolution 1920-04. Staff report? None. Move to approve the Instructional Materials Governing Board Resolution 19-20-04. Second. First and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Student provincial vote? Aye. Aye. Motion carries, roll call. Matthew Balzarini? Aye. Sharon Lampel? Aye. Dan Goodrich? Aye. David Pombo? Aye. Colin Clements? Aye. Thank you. Information discussion items, item A, Cordis Elementary School Color Scheme. Staff report? I'd like to invite our architect, Wes King, from Nichols, Melberg, and Rosetto, uh, who's going to present um, a color, color scheme for discussion and or feedback. Welcome, Mr. King. Thank you. Be right back. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to stand here and talk, and then I'll wander over so you can see more. But this is the color scheme we're proposing for Cordis. And you'll notice or recall that Cordis's design vernacular is the same style as the high school. But we didn't want it to just be a repeat of a high school. So we've introduced complementary colors to make it so that it's not just another smaller version of the high school. So what you see on here is two colors of plaster, the roof color, and then this is the column color for the covered walkways. So I'll walk around. Thoughts, comments, concerns? The board. Uh, just those are not the exact same colors, but similar colors for the high school colors. Is that correct? This, the beige color is very similar to the high school. The, the high school has like three variations of beige on it. And so it's hard to differentiate, but it's, the beige is very similar. The roof color of the high school is a lighter, more terracotta color. And again, we tried to not just mimic that. And so darker color it's a it's a lighter color but a red it's just right it has less red more orange in what the high school it's actually the same color as on this building as well. but it's a similar scheme that's what you're saying yeah the scheme is very yeah. similar yeah I like it my only comment is that audience Hansen was done before I was on the board and and I couldn't see it and I love the way it turned out so thank you I don't tell you, you can't take what I think. <laughs> uh, we, we didn't think we were going to like it. Remember when we had that discussion? We, oh, yeah. 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 But it <laughs> looks great. It looks turned out great. It definitely looks different on the building. Yeah. yeah. 
it makes a big difference when you have the third dimension to actually see how the shadow ends up working. Well, I usually have something to say. I like it. <laughs> well, it looks good. I'm very similar to the high school, and the high school looks great. So yeah. yeah. Ahead, so uh, the, I was still just getting into my coffee mode when I saw this. And so one of the conversations we talked about is um, the, the roof. And it's a pretty strong color. And what would that look like with a little bit lighter version of that? So that was one conversation we had. Obviously, this is the board's choice. But I did want to bring up, um, inspired by um, my morning coffee, uh, that idea of a, a little bit lighter color. <clears throat> Clearly, you guys didn't like that idea, and well, I'm okay right. with that. A little bit lighter would be fine, also. I have a like uh, the scheme. I have a question that go ahead, David. Les may be able to answer. Oh, oh, if yeah. I know the darker the color, the more it concentrates the heat. Mm -hmm. Would lightening it up a little bit make an appreciable difference in the amount of heat generated from the? They actually put pigments in the paints on the roofs now that they get that just about as much reflectivity from a darker color as a lighter color. So it would be it would be more reflective and therefore less heat in your attic, but it would be pretty negligible. Interesting. And Dr. Nicholas, I I don't take my lack of comment to be a disagreement. I'm specifically saying I can't I can I I can tell that I can't visualize from a small sample board like that what it's going to look like because Hanson looks great. And uh, so I'm just kind of like, I, I, I abstain. <laughs> My thought what? is that the, that the gray could definitely be a little lighter. The gray seems very dark to me. Yeah, so the, the logic on that color mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's hue or it's saturation level mm -hmm. is because you'll see it's often down low. So we don't want a light color down low because that's where the kids are going to be at all the time, True. making True. it dirty. And so we would be hesitant to go too much lighter than what we've got there for that reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. The only question I would have with lightening the red is it's hard to go very light with red without making it look pink. Yeah, if, if we switched, it would be switching to more of the true terracotta looking like the more of an high school orange has, rather than is the next choice. They don't really have a little bit lighter red. It would be just w one or the other of those two. I know where some people want me to go, so I need <laughs> you to tell me where to go. <laughs> I, my thought is if you go to the more terracotta color, it's going to look more like a clone of the high school and it would although I like the fact that it looks similar I like the idea of it having a distinct look and not just like more of the high school mm -hmm. although I love the look of the high school I concur David Dr. Nichols have you conferred with any of your staff Are there any other varying opinions <laughs> um, I uh, at cabinet today I neglected to review this uh, color scheme um, but I understand mr. Uh, mr. Miller wears a uh, multicolor socks often and he would be the first person we would check with <laughs> no. any public comment <laughs> I would like to point out that this is a metal roof <coughs> and not a tiled roof so we, we were leaning more towards a lighter color just because the metal is kind of more prominent and it doesn't have the It's the a depth. flat metal roof yeah. like on your other schools like Altamont, for example. Yeah. It's not the type you have. This. And remember, this is the same footprint as Altamont, so it's going to look, the buildings will look different in terms of their facades and color schemes, but the it's the same footprint. The amount of the roof color that you see from the street, for example, at Altamont will be similar to here. Or as volume. But if there we go lighter than that, it's going to be the more orange terracotta. Correct, yeah. Right. So we, there's a limitation, obviously, to the colors available from the manufacturer. So that would be the next choice that would go with the rest of everything. So there's no halfway in between. It would be a custom color, Sharon. And I don't and we don't want to pay for a custom color. <laughs> Wes, did you say it would match the roof color on here? The other color, not the one. The other color would yeah. match. 
what you currently have. Eat more terracotta. You want to adjourn and run outside really quick? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm happy to do it either way. We feel as your designers that it would work equally well either way. There are some strong opinions and some not so strong opinions, so I just need someone to tell us which way you want to go. Anyone have a strong opinion? I don't have a strong opinion. I, have no I stand opinion. firmly on the fence. Have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> this is a first. Can we, can we get some <laughs> sort of consensus? Like, yeah. I will suggest that we stick with what Wes is presenting. I think so. He did a great job on Hanson, and I really had some serious questions about it, and now uh -huh. I'm in love you with it. You all did, yeah. And, so. and if we don't like it, Wes can get up there with a paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but. I'll lose all faith the next time I have to present this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so if I may divert from the agenda slightly, I do wanted to just ask one quick question about the upcoming Costa Elementary. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's just an informational thing, not a, anything exciting. So I've been toying with the idea of designing the school so that it's all one building instead of three buildings like Hanson or seven buildings like Cordis or Altamont. And I just wanted to sort of get your gut reaction to that concept. We've already talked about it being two stories, um, but in terms of how secure it would be, you know, functional, not functional, if it were all one building. I like it. I think it'd be good as long as you have exits on both ends. Yeah, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. My only concern is this is a, this is a huge K-8 school with varying tr uh, passing periods and the noise is my con my only concern right off the bat because okay. um, that's kind of the only negative I've heard from <clears throat> having the two-story building is sometimes it's noisy yeah we can hear the people moving in the corridor and if it's all one building how do we do that so that'd be my only I, <clears throat> I would be very interest interested to see the footprint of all one building if the multi-use room and everything is all in one yeah. building, I would be. I'd be very interested to show you that, David. Well, I, I went to school and worked in New York City. It's all one building. Mm -hmm. And the hallway noises with all the different bells and things, it was never an issue. I, every school I ever went to, <laughs> that when I didn't go to school in California, it was always one building. Yeah. Yeah. Every school I ever went to was one room. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> the schools as spread out as Ultima and whatnot, that, mm -hmm. that's the California thing. You don't see that outside of California. That's very much well, no, I mean, that was one of the, the, the pros in our discussion with having a two-story building was that it's, it creates a smaller campus, so it's easier to, to manage. Mm -hmm. um, Gives you more uh, room I'm, outside. For I would be interested schools. to see how just the layout, how it looks. Yeah. Less too much trouble to do a concept. Like no, absolutely. I intend to bring you more than one choice the next time we talk about it. But well, I no, just I wanted to get your vibe to see if that should even be one, one of, of the options for consideration. Yeah, definitely. I'd be interested. I to actually, see what it would look like. I just read an article about schools that are being designed with safety specifically in mind, and that seems to be the concept that a lot are going to. Yeah. It's a lot easier to control. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Wes. Thank you. Moving on to calendar, item A, Wednesday, September 18th is a safety committee meeting at 3.30. Item B, Wednesday, September 18th is the next governing board meeting at uh, 7 o'clock. Item C, Thursday, September 19th, DLAC meeting at 6.30. Item D, Thursday, September 26th, facilities committee meeting at 6.30. Item E, uh, Wednesday, October 9th, wellness committee at 3.30. Uh, in a moment, we're going to be adjourning the closed session. In closed session, we're going to be discussing item A, student discipline and other confidential matters per Education Code Section 35146. Uh, one item, consider approval of staff recommendation for student readmission after expulsion of student 18-1907, 2019-2020 school year. Item B, conference with labor, negotiator, uh, labor negotiators. Item one, agency designated representative Superintendent Nicholas. Item two, employee organizations LTA and CTA. Item C, public employee dis 
discipline, dismissal, release, complaint, and item D, conference with real, negoti real property negotiators. Uh, property is 397 East Ramsey Drive in Mountain House. Agency negotiators, Superintendent Nicholas, negotiating parties, Mountain House developers, Camilos, Trimark, Shea Homes. Uh, under negotiation is price, terms of payment, or both. I move, I'll move to um, adjourn to closed session. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Student preferential vote? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We are now adjourned to closed session. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, reconvening to open session, reporting out from action from closed session. Closed session item uh, one, uh, A1, student discipline and other confidential matters, education code 35146. The board took action on a motion by Trustee Goodrich, seconded by Trustee Lampel, to approve staff recommendation of student readmission after expulsion uh, of student number 181907 for the 2019 2020 school year by the following vote five ayes. We have a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We're now adjourned.